Hi, I'm Mike Marin, and in this video, we'll introduce multiple linear regression. Multiple linear regression is useful for modeling the relationship between a numeric outcome, dependent or y variable, and multiple explanatory, independent or x variables. We will be working with the lung capacity data that was introduced earlier in this series of videos. I've already gone ahead and imported the data into R and attached it. Our outcome variable will be lung capacity. To fit our linear model, we will be using the lm command. You can access the help menu by typing help and the name of the command in brackets, or by typing the command name directly into the help search window. We will be working with scripts in R. You can see I have one prepared here. Having worked through my series of videos, you should be a bit more comfortable using R at this point. To learn more about writing or saving scripts in R, see my video in series 1 on writing scripts in R. First, let's fit a linear regression model using age and height as our explanatory or x variables. And let's save this in an object called model1. We'll submit this command here. And now, let's ask for a summary of this model. Here, we can see the R squared of 0.843. Approximately 84% of variation in lung capacity can be explained by our model, that is, can be explained by age and height. Here, we can see the F statistic and P value for an overall test of significance of our model. This tests the null hypothesis that all of the model coefficients are zero. In our example here, it tests specifically that the slope for age and height are zero. Here, we can see the residual standard error. This gives us an idea of how far observed lung capacities, or Y values, are from the predicted or fitted lung capacity, the Y hats. This gives us an idea of the typical sized residual or error. The intercept of negative 11.747 is the estimated mean Y value when all X's are zero. This would be the estimated mean lung capacity for someone of age and height zero. You'll notice that this doesn't have a very meaningful interpretation. To give the intercept a better interpretation, we can center age and height. This is a topic we'll discuss in following videos. We can see that the slope for age is 0.126. This is the effect of age on lung capacity adjusting or controlling for height. We associate an increase of one year in age with an increase of 0.126 in lung capacity, adjusting or controlling for the height. We can also see the hypothesis test that the slope equals zero here. The slope for height is 0.278. This is the estimated effect of height on lung capacity, adjusting for age. We can see the test for the hypothesis that the slope for height is zero here. Now let's go ahead and calculate Pearson's correlation between age and height. We can see that age and height are very highly correlated. The collinearity between age and height means that we should not directly interpret the slopes, say the slope of age, as the effect of age on lung capacity adjusting for height. This high correlation between age and height suggests that these two effects are somewhat bounded together. Dealing with collinearity is a topic we'll discuss in later videos. And finally, as we've seen in earlier videos, we can create a confidence interval for the model coefficients using the confint command. Let's go ahead and take a look at a confidence interval for our model coefficients. We have an estimated slope for age of 0.126. We're 95% confident the true slope is between 0.09 and 0.16. Let's go ahead and fit a linear model using all of our x variables. We'll submit this command here. And now we can ask for a summary of our model. We can check the model assumptions by examining plots of the residuals or errors. To do so, we can use the plot model command. Taking a look at these plots here, we can see the relationship between age, height, and lung capacity is approximately linear. The variation looks constant. Lung capacity given age and height is approximately normal. To learn more about producing and examining these residual plots, you can see my earlier video on examining model assumptions in linear regression. 
In the next video in this series, we'll talk more about linear regression, and specifically, we will focus our discussion on the inclusion of categorical variables or factors in a linear model. Thanks for watching this video, and make sure to check out my other instructional videos.